So this is the first video on our new topic, applying sequences in series. And at the start we're going to be looking at arithmetic sequences. And you'll be given a bunch of formula for this topic. Don't freak out, these will all be given to you for the exam as well, so you don't need to memorize them, you just need to know how to use them. Um, so by definition, an arithmetic sequence, um, we can look at this example here, 2, 4, 6, 8, what would come next if you were going to continue it on? Looking for patterns, what would you think? There'd be a 10, 12, and on it would go. So that's our example. This sequence in particular, it happens to do what every single time? It goes up by 2, right? We're counting even numbers, so plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. So these are all plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2 to get from one term to the next. And it could continue on, we can carry on for quite some time. So this is an arithmetic sequence by definition because it does have a common number added or subtracted to each term, and we can call this the common step size or the difference. And in the formula, that is referred to as D. So those are the Ds, and that would be the constant difference, which is what is added or subtracted. The next thing that we need to become familiar with in this formula might be if we're just working backwards from D, now that we know what D is, that's the difference between each of the terms. One we don't need to know. In, well in is kind of like the name for each of these numbers. If we imagine trying to put this into a box, we're going to have the first term, box it out. The first term is 2, so I'm going to call that the first term. The second term is 4. The third term is 6. The fourth term is 8. The fifth term is 10. The sixth term is 12. So these are the ins. Those are the term numbers at the top. And t sub n, that's the actual values, what they actually are. So n is kind of like the order of things, tells us where we are in the sequence, and t sub n tells us, well, for that particular location, what is the actual value of it. So if we come back over here, put this in as the nth term, um, or we can think of it as the term number, but I might just call it the nth term. It tells you the order, which term, basically. So which term and t sub n, this is actually the value of a term, of, we might say, the nth term. Now these are two that people often get confused. So, as an example, let's make a comparison here. We'll use 4 and 8. For this particular term, er, for this particular sequence, when n is equal to 4, t sub 4 is equal to 8. So when n is equal to 4, t sub 4, because n is now 4, is 8. We're saying that the fourth term in the sequence has a value of 8. So we're literally just counting them up. 1, 2, 3, 4. At number 4 in the sequence, I have a value of 8. And that's what's going on. 8 is the value. 4 just tells you where you are in the sequence. The last thing for us to look at here is going to be a, and this is always the first term. So a, in this case, the first term would be 2. So that's how the formula breaks out. We can get a value for any term if we know any term in a sequence, if we know what the first term was, and if we know what we're going up or down in by every single time and we can decide on one particularly if we know what the n value is for it. And some of this might still sound like Chinese too or rubbish or whatever, but um, it will start to make sense as we start to use it. So have some faith with that. There's the one little thing that I want to remind you guys of is that between brackets and letters there's going to be an individual ti indiv invisible time sign there, so don't forget the times sign. And it would be in here as well.
little invisible time sign. So when you're plugging it into your calculator, it's important to remember that. All right, so this is the formula we're going to get our head around. There's a few basic things we've got to keep in mind. But as we start to apply it, um, it hopefully will make a little bit more sense. So we'll look at that next.